Do you remember back in high school math class where you learned about the transitive property? You know, if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. SQL Server's Query Optimizer can basically do the same thing when joining different tables together under certain conditions. And it's what's known as join elimination, and that's what we're gonna be talking about today. So my name is Burt Wagner, and I am super excited to be able to make this video for SQLPerformance.com. We've got a lot of demos to go over today that describe join elimination, so let's dive right in. So join elimination basically means the SQL Server Query Optimizer can remove unnecessary joins from your queries if it can establish equality either through query logic or through database constraints. Easiest way to kind of understand how this works is just by looking at a lot of different examples. So for today's demos, we're going to be using the Wide World Importers database, um, which I've linked to in my blog post on SQLPerformance.com. You can find all the scripts from this demo there as well. I've also provided a link below in the description. So the most basic example of join elimination that we can look at uh, occurs when we have a trusted foreign key constraint on our tables. So for example, we have these invoices table with invoice lines and there, there's a foreign key relationship there between invoice lines and invoices. So if we do an inner join and we select only columns from our invoice lines table, the execution plan does something that you might not expect. Instead of seeing two tables in our execution plan, we actually only see one. We only see the table for invoice lines. And the reason we only see one table is because we are witnessing join elimination. Because that foreign key constraint exists, SQL Server knows that logically, if that row is in invoice lines, that invoice ID for that record needs to exist in invoices. That's what the constraint defines. And so since every value in the invoice lines table has to be in the invoices table, SQL Server just says, hey, I don't actually need to do that join. I can just eliminate it, hence the name. To prove that it's the foreign key constraint at work here, we could actually drop the foreign key and run our same exact query again. What you'll notice is that our execution plan now has both of our tables, invoices and invoice lines in it, getting joined together like you would expect before returning our result set. And SQL Server has to do that. Because we dropped our foreign key constraint, SQL Server's query optimizer no longer understands the relationship between these two tables. And so because we dropped that foreign key constraint, SQL Server has no way of verifying that all of the you know invoice IDs and invoice lines exist in invoices. So it actually has to do that inner join, has to grab all the data from both tables, join them together, and then bring back our results. So as you can imagine, there could be some serious performance implications from this, right? If SQL Server in our original query with foreign keys, it didn't have to read in the invoices table at all. In this particular example, that saved 124 pages that it, uh, you know, didn't have to read into memory, but in a more real world application, that could be way more data, right? That potentially you can prevent SQL Server from having to read. Now, there are some limitations you should be aware of with join elimination. If we add back our foreign key constraint, but we don't check it and we try to run that first query again, instead of getting our execution plan with only reads coming from our invoice lines table, you'll see we still have both tables in the execution plan. The reason for that is that SQL Server can't trust the relationship because we didn't check our foreign key. The solution here is to force SQL Server to check our constraint, make sure that there's no invalid data, make sure that SQL Server can trust that referential integrity that that foreign key creates, and then we'll be able to once again have SQL Server use that join elimination to simplify our query. Another limitation to be aware of is that in our example query, we were only returning rows from invoice lines, nothing from invoices. If we do want to get anything back from invoices, um, you'll see that SQL Server doesn't do join elimination because it can't. It needs to go read that data from invoices to actually bring it back. Finally, uh, join elimination doesn't work on multi-column foreign keys, so if you use those, you're never going to experience join elimination, and it also doesn't work in TempDB. With all that said, let's go look at a few more examples of join elimination in action. So for starters, join elimination doesn't only occur when you're only joining two tables together. You can have more than two tables, and it will still work if the conditions are right. So if we add this invoice click tracking table, I just made it up, um, and we create a foreign key constraint on that invoice ID column referring back to the invoices table, 
we could actually run our query now with three tables, um, but the execution plan will show that we're only reading in data from two of them. We, SQL Server has eliminated that invoices table altogether. And once again, it knows to do that because it has these trusted foreign key constraints on these tables, so it realizes it doesn't actually need to read in any data from invoices. Now, foreign key constraints aren't the only way that SQL Server's query optimizer can perform join elimination. It could also do it with just unique constraints. So in our invoice click tracking table, if we drop the foreign key constraint and instead add a unique constraint on the invoice ID column in the invoices table, you'll see that our join elimination still works. Because SQL Server knows that all of our invoice IDs are unique in invoices, this write out or join query will return all of the unique invoice IDs from invoices without needing to join on invoice click tracking because SQL Server realizes that it doesn't need that table for any kind of information. If we kind of go back to our original query where we're joining invoices with invoice lines, join elimination will also work if we turn that to a left outer join um, but still have our foreign key constraint on those tables. And it works for the same reason. SQL Server can just identify that there's a unique number of rows in our invoices table, and so it's able to just return all the rows from that table, not needing to join in the data from invoice lines. So it's possible to get join elimination to occur with inner joins, outer joins, foreign key constraints, unique constraints, but it's also possible to get it to trigger without any kind of constraint at all. So in this example here, we're right joining invoice lines with invoices. And if we look at the execution plan, no join elimination occurs because SQL Server doesn't know is there a one to one relationship here or one to many, one to zero, right? It has to read data from both tables in order to be sure that the results it's gonna give you are accurate. But we can get the query optimizer to perform join elimination on this query without even needing a foreign key constraint. What we can do is drop that foreign key constraint and just add a distinct to our query. Now what that does is it tells SQL Server, okay, just return all the distinct values from invoices. It doesn't matter anymore if there's a one-to-one -one relationship between these two tables or a one-to-many or a one-to-none. Uh, SQL doesn't care because it's just gonna return all the distinct values from invoices, so it doesn't even need to join in invoice lines uh, to get the results. So the final cool thing I wanna show you with join elimination is that it works in views. So we add back our foreign key constraint from invoice lines to invoices, and we write a query in a view um, the thing to note here is that we are selecting fields from both our invoices and invoice lines table. So this query on its own uh, will never use join elimination because SQL Server has to read the data from the table in order to be able to return it. However, if we save that query in a view and then query that view but only pull fields from our invoice lines table, like in our original example, the SQL Server query optimizer is able to use join elimination through that view um, even though the view had defined other columns. I actually think this is a pretty cool optimization because if you're setting up views for your users but they're querying those views and not necessarily needing to pull back all the fields, SQL Server is able to optimize that query and make it a little simpler than even what you defined it as in the view. So to sum things up, join elimination occurs when the SQL Server query optimizer can produce a logically equivalent execution plan without necessarily needing to read from all of the tables that your query specifies. Now remember, we can always refactor our queries to get the same execution plans that we would get from SQL Server when it does perform join elimination, right? It's just removing unnecessary tables. We can manually go remove those unnecessarily tables too. The benefit of join elimination though is if you are managing an instance with lots of different queries, maybe coming from lots of different users, it's really easy to, you know, edit a query and accidentally forget to remove you know, joins you no longer need. So with join elimination, SQL Server kind of recognizes that and says, hey, I'm not gonna do this extra work because I don't need to. So I think it's a really cool optimization to have. And also remember that in order for join elimination to work, a lot of the time in a lot of these examples that we looked at today, you need to have foreign keys in place. And so there's a lot of overhead in maintaining foreign keys, you know, not only with their initial creation, but making sure that they remain trusted with SQL Server and that the data in them is valid, um, that that referential integrity is maintained. So I would never, you know, add foreign keys just to get join elimination, but if you are using foreign keys already, um, it's kind of cool to be aware that this may happen and your queries might actually speed up because of it. 
So thanks for watching this video. I hope you have a better understanding of what join elimination is and under what conditions the query optimizer will perform it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.